Gypsy Rose Blanchard made worldwide headlines when she was convicted of orchestrating her mother's murder. This is the house where Claudinia Blanchard was found stabbed to death. It set off a roller coaster story. What would drive Gypsy to want to plan the murder of her own mother? From being a tender young girl incapacitated in a wheelchair with so many medical conditions to actually being able to walk properly without the aid of anyone and all of the medical conditions disappearing in just one day, this story is one that has captivated the public's attention, unraveling a web of deception, abuse, and the pursuit of freedom. On the other hand, the life of this young girl took a dark turn as she became entangled in a complex narrative that eventually led to a shocking crime. What exactly was this crime that was committed? What was her reason for being part of this evil conspiracy? Keep watching till the end to find out. This is Unsolved Files, a place where crime stories are being brought to your doorstep. What are you waiting for? Just hit the subscribe button for more fascinating and suspense-filled crime stories. Now, let's get back into this story and uncover this mystery. Gisby Rose Blanchard was born in 1991 to D.D. Dee Dee Blanchard, a supposedly loving mother who depicted her daughter as seriously ill. Gypsy Rose had a great deal of medical treatment from an early age, including several surgeries, treatments, and drugs, all done in the name of curing various conditions such as muscular dystrophy, epilepsy, and leukemia. By carefully crafting the appearance of a sick kid, Dee Dee was able to elicit compassion and financial assistance from kind-hearted people and non-profit groups. The child was ensnared in the never-ending lies spun by her mother. Wait a minute. Before we go deep into this story, let's take a look at who D.D. Blanchard really is. Born on May 3, 1967, in Chack Bay, Louisiana, Claudine D.D. Blanchard grew up in the neighboring community of Golden Meadow. She came from a family of five. When D.D. was 24, she became pregnant by Rod Blanchard, who was 17 at the time. But after being married, the couple divorced in less than a year. Rod said to BuzzFeed News that he realized he wasn't where he was meant to be and that he wasn't even in love with D.D. when he woke up one day, exactly on his 18th birthday. At that moment, he saw he had married her for the wrong reason. In the 2017, D.D.'s family accused her of stealing from them and said she periodically got into legal trouble for signing fraudulent checks. Following Gypsy's birth, D.D. moved back in with her father's family and Laura Petra. D.D.'s stepmother claimed that D.D. tried to poison her by putting Roundup weed killer in her meals. She was putting some poison in my food, the same thing she had put in the plant. However, Laura was bedridden for about nine months after the incident and didn't get well until D.D. left the house. D.D.'s relatives recalled that she had a brief job as a nurse's assistant and had an amazing memory for medical terms and facts, which may have helped her maintain the lie about her daughter's illnesses. Nevertheless, when Gypsy Rose grew older, she started to doubt her mother's story and the significant medical operations. The truth, on the other hand, was far more disturbing than anybody could have dreamed it would be. As you may recall, in the year 2015, the body of D.D. Blanchard was discovered by her family inside their residence, and Gypsy Rose was reported missing. But how did it get to this point? The subsequent investigation revealed the extent of the deception orchestrated by D.D., who had fabricated Gypsy Rose's illnesses and confined her to a wheelchair unnecessarily. Sadly, it turned out that Dee Dee had been lying about Gypsy's health since she was a baby. She claimed that her daughter had sleep apnea when she was eight years old. Dee Dee added that Gypsy was suffering from leukemia and had muscular dystrophy. She also convinced doctors that her daughter needed a feeding tube and a wheelchair, and she made her daughter undergo surgery just to get the feeding tube in her. Dee Dee listed other medical problems like asthma, seizures, and hearing and visual impairments due to its severity. Gypsy was prescribed a truckload of medications and had to sleep with a breathing machine. The poor child underwent multiple surgeries and procedures, including the removal of her salivary glands. Gypsy's teeth succumbed to the medications and rotted. The affected teeth were pulled out, and she was left with little or nothing. Unfortunately, she did not understand. She thought she was ill. But the actual truth was that Gypsy could walk didn't even need a feeding tube and didn't have cancer, and her head was bald due to the fact that her mother shaved it to make her story believable. Unknown to many, Dee had a mental illness called Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Why will a mother fake her own child's sickness and subject her to years of pain? She made up her daughter's ill health to receive attention and sympathy from the public. And yes, this worked. Dee was perceived to be a devoted mother who cared for her sick child. Medical tests often showed contradictory results about Gypsy's alleged ailments, but her mother disagreed. She stopped visiting doctors, who questioned her insistence. Many of the caregivers she approached had no option but to do her bidding, 
Dee was a trained nurse and knew about drugs. She would give her daughter drugs to mimic certain conditions so that the doctors would be more confused. Before we go on, remember to subscribe to our channel, Unsolved Files, where we bring you deeper views of criminal and unsolved cases. Please give this video a thumbs up, share, and comment. Let us know what you think about it. However, when Gypsy was old enough to describe her symptoms, her mother instructed her not to speak to doctors during appointments. Only DD communicated her fake medical history. She told Gypsy's father, Rod Blanchard, that their daughter had a chromosomal disorder that caused her several issues. Rod was a good father. He helped his daughter through it, but then his family noticed something was off. They discovered that Gypsy could walk and didn't need a wheelchair. When Dee Dee got wind of this truth, she packed her bags and moved out of the city. She lied about being a victim of Hurricane Katrina, so she and Gypsy received assistance to relocate from Louisiana to Missouri in 2005. There, she resumed her botched doctor's appointments. When Gypsy became a teenager, Dee Dee still claimed she was ill and lied about her age. In 2008, the mother and daughter moved into a new home in Springfield, Missouri. The property was painted pink and had a wheelchair ramp specially made to aid Gypsy's movement. Dee Dee also received benefits running into thousands of dollars. As for Gypsy, she enjoyed charity-sponsored Disney World visits. It was a tortuous experience for Gypsy, but a glorious experience for her mother, Dee Dee, basked in the attention of the government and charity organizations. According to the Associated Press, authorities believed that D.D. may have had financial motivations for the deception. D.D. and Gypsy received a house from Habitat for Humanity and went backstage at Miranda Lambert concerts via the Make-A-Wish Foundation and went on paid trips to Disney World. Rod Blanchard, Gypsy's father, told people in 2017 that he and D.D. split before Gypsy's birth and that D.D. would rarely let him see Gypsy because she said he couldn't handle Gypsy's care. It was a masterpiece of disguise, he said. It was the perfect opportunity to control Gypsy. However, when Gypsy was 14, a neurologist in Missouri believed she was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Unfortunately, he never reported this to the authorities. He felt this was the case, but didn't have evidence. And obviously, he was scared of raising false alarms. The following year, an anonymous person wrote to authorities, saying that Gypsy's ailments were all a lie. This resulted in two care workers visiting Dee Dee's home. This visit was fruitless, as she convinced them that her daughter had a huge problem. Nevertheless, the workers nodded their heads in affirmation and left. Dee altered her daughter's birth certificate to make her younger, but by now Gypsy grew increasingly agitated, and she wanted a way out of the mess. She is desperate to be free from her mother's wrath, and that would only be possible if she killed her. She nursed different ideas in her mind until she devised a plan. Her ultimate strategy to be free from her mother led to a tragic ending. In 2011, Gypsy made the first move to run away from her mother. That year, she met a man at a science fiction convention. Unknown to her, her mother tracked them down through mutual friends. She chatted with the mystery guy and convinced him that Gypsy was a minor, which was also a lie because her child had clocked 19. Dee Dee then smashed her computer so she wouldn't have access to this man forever. She restrained her in her room and didn't allow her to visit friends. She was chained to her bed for two weeks until her mom let her go. Luckily, Gypsy managed to get back online. She made her second move, this time by joining a Christian dating site. And there was where she met one Nicholas Godijan. After a year of messaging, she told him the truth about her mother, how she could walk, and would want to leave her mother's house so badly. Gypsy told her neighbor, Alea Woodmansey, that she was in love. Gypsy's father, Rod, also believes his daughter was madly in love with Godijan. On the other hand, Godijan introduced Gypsy to BDSM themes as the two grew closer. Surprisingly, she ended up asking him for a huge favor, and he obliged. Gypsy begged Nicholas to kill her mother so they could elope and start life in another city. He probably was head over heels in love with her and didn't consider the consequences. So, in June 2015, he visited her house and stabbed Dee Dee while Gypsy waited in the bathroom. On the night of the murder, Gypsy and Dee Dee gave each other manicures, and she put Dee Dee to bed, promising to be a good girl. It was after Dee Dee fell asleep that Godijan had the opportunity to enter the residence, which led to him stabbing Dee Dee to death. When he was done, he called out to his shaky girlfriend and the pair allegedly stole $4,000 from Dee Dee's room, then went to a day's inn outside of Springfield, where they ate brownies. The pair then mailed the knife back to Godijan's family home in Wisconsin, where they fled by bus, believing their problems were over. But not so fast, because the police busted their home and arrested them. It was an easy catch. Earlier, Gypsy posted on the Facebook account she shared with her mother. She wrote, 
that B asterisk teach is dead. She later confessed that she wanted the police to find her mother's body. That's why she wrote it. When news of the murder went viral, people wondered why Dee Dee's beloved daughter went to that length to kill her mother, who had devoted her entire life to caring for her. But as the surprising continue in the mind of so many people, the news of Gypsy's real health condition to become public. So, why didn't she expose her mother's lies all these years? Why the decision of killing her? However, Gypsy explained that she was afraid her mother would hurt her if she confessed the truth. Her mother regulated and watched her every action, so there was no opportunity for treachery. While she had normal intelligence, her mother claimed she had a mental age of seven. No one would trust a seven-year-old making hefty accusations in public. Gypsy's state is described by experts as being akin to Stockholm Syndrome. Her captor had complete control over her senses, much like a kidnapper would. She was held prisoner for no fault of her own, and her crime was somewhat understood. Gypsy was charged with second-degree murder and sentenced to 10 years in jail for her involvement in her mother's death, Claudine D.D. D. Blanchard. However, her then-boyfriend, Nicholas Gaudijan, was charged with first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Nevertheless, she completed 85% of her sentence in 2023, making her eligible for an early release. At the age of 32, she was freed from prison. She expressed her gratitude for her liberation. I'm free. I'm free to have friends. I'm free to do what I want. I might be in a controlled environment, but this is nice. But she was saddened by her mother's death. Her objective is to serve as a beacon of hope for Munchausen by proxy victims. Her post-incarceration bucket list includes a number of things, one of which is going on a shopping spree and binge watching her favorite films. However, she states that she would never watch the 2019 limited series on Ask T. Hulu because the real crime drama is based on her experience. Would you condemn Gripsy for plotting the killing of her mother, Dee Dee, and wishing to escape that world of lies and torture? What will you say about her boyfriend who helped her in killing her mother, who in the world's name would put their healthy child in a wheelchair? and force them to eat through feeding tubes for the rest of their life. I'll leave it to you folks to respond to these questions in the space provided for comments below. Do you know that the heart of man is desperately wicked? Yeah, three generations were wiped out all for the greed of one man. Go watch it now, it's on your screen. The family that was murdered for five pounds million vertical bar real crime. Truly horrific. What age are you waiting for? Go watch it now.